Okay, so we're going to make a new part today, and we're going to be making this guy. Some of the math we're going to need to know is that the, these are radii or radiuses, and our computer needs to know diameters. So if this is a radius of 0.5, we're going to be using a diameter of 1. And if this is a radius of 1 and a quarter, we're going to be using 2.5. So let's go ahead and start Inventor. I'm going to start a new sketch on the XY plane. And the first thing we're going to do is make this little tiny 1 8 by 1 8 hole. And we're going to use a different type of rectangle this time, the three point center. As you can see, you start by selecting the center, then the distance to the side, and then the height. You can also choose its orientation. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type in 0.125, which is going to be its width. Hit enter. And then I come up and I can adjust its height. I'm going to type 0.125 again. So I get a square now that's 0.125 by 0.125. And instead of doing more, I'm going to right click my mouse and hit OK. That tells you the computer that you are done with that part of the sketch. Now, Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this circle here on the bottom, which is a radius of two and a half. So circle, center it at the origin, and its diameter is going to be 2.5. Hit enter, zoom out, make sure it looks okay. Check, right click, hit okay. You're done with that part of the sketch. And then we're going to put a circle up here right on the y-axis. And you know it's on the y-axis because X is perfectly zero. Click. And that is going to be a radius of one inch. Enter. Now, according to the picture, the sketch, this needs to be 1.75 inches apart from center to center. So we're just going to go on dimension. Make sure you are right on the center. Click. Right on the center here. Click. And we can adjust this to 1.75. At this point, these are sized perfectly so that they should come together and give you a snowman looking creation. Right click, hit OK. Now here's where we're going to be using a lot more new tools. These constraints over here, they do different things. Today we're going to be using this one. It is a tangent line. So what it does is it locks the curve of the circle onto a straight line so that it only touches in exactly one place. But first, we need a line. So I'm actually going to make this longer than it needs to be. Click, right click, hit OK. And you'll see why in a minute. So when I click the constraint, pick the circle that I want it to be tangent to, click the line. This little symbol here means that it is tangent. The same over here. Now you notice the top circle moved over. We'll fix that later. OK. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Nice long line. And I'm going to tangent it to both circles. OK. Now, I'm going to do something a little fancy here. And I'm going to trim off the extra. That's these little scissors here. Click, drag across, gone. Wow. Click, drag across, just like a ninja. Dang. Dang. Hit OK. Now, this is where I want to zoom in and make sure this guy is centered. So I just grab the center, and I can pull him over. See, and whoa, whoa, it's going crazy. I think that looks good. Yep, okay, zoom back out. Now, the problem is if I try and extrude it just the way it is, I'm going to have to extrude each of these pieces separately. So I want to go back into trim and clear out the junk on the inside. There, so now it's just one surface. At this point, I'm going to hit finish sketch. Extrude, and it's going to be 0.125 inches. And zoom in on it, make sure everything looks good. Front view, does that go through? Yes, perfect. Oh, too fast. Oh, there we go. 